Hello everyone, in this video let us discuss how to work on uh, a Jira core server project. So today let us take a look at how to work on a Jira core project. So before I start I just want to uh, quickly remind you that in the previous video we spent time uh, looking at the Jira core uh, interface. Uh, we spent uh, time looking at how Jira looks like if you are totally new to Jira. So in this video we are going to basically uh, discuss uh, how to request uh, for a new project uh, creation when you let us say have to use Jira for your uh, your project for your day-to-day -day activities and maybe you are a project administrator maybe you are responsible for uh, managing your team so you can of course request uh, for a new project and then uh, there are certain things that you can do if you are a project uh, administrator. So we'll also take a look at some uh, project administration activities. And uh, finally we'll uh, do a quick walkthrough of, uh, of, of a project in Jira. So in the previous video we, uh, we logged in from a user called uh, Maria. Maria has just joined uh, our company and uh, she will be managing the marketing uh, based project so basically she will be using a project in Jira to run marketing campaigns so when when you log in to Jira I mean uh, right now I am logged in uh, with Maria's account so I am I'm pretending that I am Maria but uh, what I'm trying to show here is that if you log into Jira uh, without admin rights as a normal user this is what you will uh, see now in the previous video we did a walkthrough of the interface so today let us start working on a project now if you have to work on uh, Jira then your project can already be there in uh, Jira let us say if you are just uh, supposed to work on activities maybe you are already part of a team who has a project already so what you can do is you can uh, take a look at all the projects that you have access to and based on of course the application uh, uh, all the applications installed on your Jira you can have a Jira software based projects you can have Jira service test projects or you can have Jira uh, business projects which is uh, Jira core and that is what we are of course discussing in this particular uh, video series now if you want to filter on uh, all the Jira core projects you can click on all project types then you can click on business and then you can of course take a look at uh, the projects but in our example we have to create a new project so basically M Maria will request the the, 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 the the Jira administrator to create a project for her team for managing marketing campaigns so imagine that you know you have some ticketing system in place or maybe Maria can directly call the help desk or maybe raise a ticket in Jira maybe you have a project already in your Jira instance to raise a, a, a ticket to, to get a new project or you have some way to contact your Jira administrator now when your Jira administrator re receives the request uh, the requirement that he or she will get from Maria is that uh, I need a project where I can manage my marketing campaigns and the marketing campaigns will be of course uh, handled by a few team members maybe designers maybe content writers and uh, most of the marketing campaigns uh, will be around um, creating some designs or maybe landing pages it may also involve some blog writing so there will be some process involved where uh, in the beginning some some content will be created or some designs will be created that will be approved by someone so this is a simple example where in a marketing team a small team of uh, of designers content writers along with of course maria will be to, will be responsible for running or uh, launching these campaigns so this is the requirement that uh, the jira administrator received from maria and in the beginning what uh, what uh, Jira administrators can do they can uh, go to of course uh, their uh, create project option so this is only applicable if you are administrator so only your administrators can create a project but I'm of course showing you how it looks like and uh, before I create a project I just want to show you different options so different types of projects that you can uh, 
create in Jira. So on this particular screen, you can see here that when you create a new project, uh, your administrators can, your Jira administrators can select different templates for business-based projects as well. So if you look, if you look at the project management uh, template, you have two issue types, a task and a subtask. So basically subtask is a child of a task. So uh, in Jira core based projects, by default, you have uh, uh, for project management template task and, sub and subtask and, and the workflow is actually very simple. Uh, it is basically three states to do in progress and done. So maybe this is not really applicable for marketing campaign. Uh, let us take a look at task management. Task management also is uh, quite similar. We have just uh, one standard issue type called task and one subtask called subtask. And the workflow is even simpler. If you look at the process management, uh, where the workflow is uh, definitely a bit more complicated, uh, although we have two issue types, task and subtask. So I think this is quite uh, similar to the requirements of a marketing team uh, because here you can start with uh, maybe defining the activity. It could be writing content, writing blog, or maybe designing some uh, some some graphics or designing a web page. And then it will go uh, through the review process and if it is approved then it will be considered done if it is not approved it will be uh, maybe rejected and it will uh, go back to in progress and it might also be cancelled so i think this is very very uh, near or very close to the requirements so let us suggest this particular uh, uh, template with these configurations uh, for maria and the good thing about jira is that you can always uh, change these configurations so uh, this is always that, uh, you know, this is always a possibility. Your administrators can always modify uh, your workflow, maybe add a new issue type, maybe uh, add more, uh, more more things, more configurations that may be suitable for the requirement of, of course, your organization or maybe for a specific team. So you can always modify it. So these templates are nothing but a starting point. But let us see what uh, Maria has to say about this this project. So the name of the project could be anything. I mean, uh, you can tell your administrators what the name should be uh, because it should reflect what you're doing, or what your team is doing. So the name could be marketing uh, campaigns and 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 maybe the uh, the key is MC or it could be maybe Mark, you know, something. It is, it is totally up to you. I mean, uh, this key should be, of course, uh, similar to what you are doing. Uh, yeah, I mean, this should be similar to the project name so that you know what this is all about. Because based on the key, you will have different activities, different issues, different tasks, uh, each having its unique identifier. And uh, in Jira, we have issue keys and issue keys are prefixed with the project key. And you have a project lead. Now, this project lead... Um, should be i believe maria but let us not change it right now let us keep it as it is uh we will let uh, maria take a look at the project and then we'll come back and we'll more will probably modify it so but usually it is your uh your your project manager or project administrator so let, let us modify this right now or let us not you know do back and forth so l l let us make our maria the project lead and uh, create a project so once you create a project uh it will be of course ready for use and if i log in back to uh, uh, to, to maria's account if i go back to the to the browser where i was logged in as maria i can immediately see this uh, this particular uh, marketing campaign uh, project marketing campaigns project and uh, now maria can start you start working on it now the moment i click on uh, this project I can immediately see a few things, which is, uh, uh, of course, uh, on top you have the project name, the summary. So summary is basically a place where you can uh, take a look at what is happening in your project. Now, if you click on summary, uh, it is right now empty. It says on the right hand side, uh, Maria M, which is the project manager, or project lead. Uh, and it is asking us to create a new issue. So you, you, you have a project to now start your work and along with the activity, you can also take a look at the statistics. So statistics will basically come into picture when you 
you when you have some issues so we will be later on uh, creating some issues and when you create a new issue when you assign your issues to maybe your uh, team members you will start seeing those issues here and at the same time you may have uh, uh, to look at the reports because reports will help you in uh, staying on top of what is happening in the in the project so we'll come back to this particular uh, uh, part where we will be creating issues and uh, working on the project but before i uh, before i continue before i end this video i want to also talk about <clears throat> the jira projects administration so in jira we have jira admin rights and we also have some additional rights on the project so right now maria can work on the issues but that is it there is no additional right however maria is my project lead or um, maria is also the project administrator so we may want to give maria some additional rights so that uh, she can uh, manage her work or at least few aspects of uh, her own project so what we will do now uh, we can go to the uh, project settings so if you are logged in as the jira administrator this is of course your jira administrator's uh, responsibility you can see this option called project settings this is right now not there for your normal jira users so my 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 uh, i mean if you talk about maria who is nothing but a normal jira user she cannot really do anything beyond uh, working on issues but we want to give her some additional rights so if i go to the project settings uh, i am of course showing you the jira administrator or jira administration aspects of uh, of a, of a project but uh, this is of course not relevant if you are just a normal jira user but i think there is no harm in looking at how jira project works so the moment you click on G on G on jira project settings and right now of course you are talking about one project we have so many things to worry about but we will not get confused here so what i i will quickly do i will quickly jump to the users and roles now if you click on uh, users and roles you will have the option to give maria some additional rights and uh, based on that particular right that you will give to maria maria can further manage her own project so basically we want to add a user to a role uh, and what i will be doing here i will be selecting here Ma Ma maria which is uh, right now i mean she is right now a normal user but uh, we want to give this user administrator right but not uh, the uh, not the jira administrator it is the project administrator right so based on this uh, additional right where G, where maria is now the the administrator of a project she can do few additional things so let us see what, what what she can do so if i go back i can now refresh my uh, my project so right now i'm logged in as maria and the moment i do that i can see this uh, project settings so this is uh, something that uh, can this is something that will be there for your normal jira users when you, when they have jira project administrator rights now you can see all these all, all these details here like uh, as a jira project administrator i can take a look at the configurations but i may not be able to modify these things because i am just a normal user but i can i can do few things only on my project and and those few things are basically managing your uh, own project's components and versions along with the users and roles so let us discuss it very quickly so if you look at your uh, pr project settings if you are logged in as a project administrator not jira administrator but project administrator which is right now maria in this case and maria is working on marketing campaigns project the first thing that i will uh, show you is versions now versions are uh, uh, in jira nothing but uh, milestones so as a project administrator maria can maybe create uh, some versions or milestones if required now if you if you remember in the previous video we talked about various uh, campaigns that we have to run so let us say we have to run a campaign which is maybe a uh, july campaign uh, and uh, we want to say that this particular campaign should end by maybe uh, 24th of july uh, you can also have some additional description like uh, this is for uh, our uh, ios app and, and and so on so you can have one one campaign for july or 
maybe one campaign for a specific uh, a specific app or maybe in our case we are trying to launch uh, mobile app we have already launched mobile apps but we want to now promote them we want to run campaigns for them and we can have similar campaign for august so in this case um, maria wants to track these campaigns based on let us say the month just to have some clarity because these are in line with uh, what, uh, uh, what what they do in the, what they do in the company which is uh, uh, launching mobile apps for their food delivery service so i will uh, just create some versions we can always modify them and rename them if, if required but as a project administrator your project administ administrators can create these campaigns and these campaigns will uh, will will come into picture when you start creating issues or tasks in your jira the second thing that they can do is they can run uh, they can basically uh, break up their project into different components now components are really important because uh, uh, when you create a new activity in a, in a in a in a project you have the option to basically specify these components as a way to define uh, maybe a sub module or maybe uh, uh, to say that this is basically a smaller part of your big project now let us say if you are running running marketing campaigns and maybe you want to have some breakup based on uh, what k kind of activity you are doing what kind of campaigns you are running so maybe you have a camp maybe you have a campaign where you, where you have to write uh, maybe a blog or maybe you have to write uh, or create some uh, landing pages and so on so you can use your type of activities but uh, in this case maybe these components will be uh, my 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 apps so we can have one component for ios and when you create a new component you have the, op the option to basically uh, define that who can be your component lead now in this case we have a team involved because maria is uh, uh, is a is a manager of a marketing team and in marketing team we have few designers we have content writers so we will probably uh, probably have some uh, some designers who will be the component lead and they are responsible for maybe just doing designing activities for ios app and so on so you can you can also uh, make your uh, uh, specific team member as the as the default assignee of that particular component so let us say you have uh, uh, you have uh, one component and whenever there is a new issue raised for this particular component you want a couple uh, to be the default assignee so if the ticket or if the not the ticket but if the issue if the activity is not assigned to anyone it will be couple by default but of course it can be changed it, it is basically just to make your life easy so that the responsibility within your team or within your project for a specific component can be owned by someone so you can add a component where you have a component lead uh, and component lead is of course Kapil who is my designer for iOS based activities around of course uh, maybe uh, creating a web page or maybe uh, you know few other things mostly de design related activities but uh, Kapil is responsible for iOS similarly I, I may also want to add uh, one component called Android so I will add Android and uh, i want maybe let us see if we have more designers so yes i believe we have uh let, let us search for designer so um, i'll probably leave it as it is because i may want to create a new user just to say that you know these are my designers usually when i am uh, working on jira for any demonstration i create users with uh, some some um, thing in their name so that i can quickly identify them so it makes uh, it easy to demonstrate how we can use it but the, the, the whole point here is that you can also leave you can basically create a component without uh, defining a lead and in this case maybe you want to leave your uh, your um, default assignee as an assigned so whenever there is a new activity for component based based uh, uh, task uh, you don't really want to assign it to anyone and maybe you can have third component called maybe uh, web pages or you know maybe you want to create some uh, some some landing pages for your new campaigns for uh, uh, different uh, different services uh, so maybe not web pages i think it should be website because we also have a website so let us modify this 
So because uh, when we talk about uh, food delivery service, we have uh, different platforms. We have a website, we have Android app, we have iOS app, and we want to run campaigns for these three different platforms separately. So we can target people uh, based on, of course, you know, the knowledge we have. Uh, but, but that is, of course, uh, the responsibility of the marketing team. We'll not really worry about how they manage their work, but we just need to give them a platform. So right now, all this thing that we have just done, like uh, defining versions, defining components, we have done it uh, uh, as project administrator. So this is something that your your project administrator, in this case, Maria, can do. So you don't have to rely on your uh, Jira administrator to do these things for you. So and, and that is one advantage of making project administrators. Now, if you click on uh, users and roles, this is also one thing that your uh, that your project administrators can do. Now, in Jira, we can have uh, different roles based on uh, what work they are doing. For example, within a project, you can have uh, a developer, you can have a project manager, you can have a testers, and what these roles will do can be defined in your permissions. But for this particular example, we will probably leave, leave it as it is, but uh, I wanted to show you how it looks like because based on uh, these users and roles, you can, you're basically letting your project administrator decide uh, who will be part of his or her team in the project and they can assign people to different roles and based on that particular mapping of people and role uh, you can ask your Jira administrators or you call your, or your Jira administrators can create a permission scheme for you so we'll, we'll not really worry about those aspects right now because in this particular case we are not too much worried about the permissions so we are happy with the versions and the components so in the next uh, video we will continue working on uh, the project and uh, mainly we will start working on an issue we will start uh, creating issues and we will see how it looks like when uh, you have a new issue assigned to you and how you can uh, proceed further in the workflow if you remember we uh, we looked at a workflow where you have maybe an approval mechanism you will probably ask someone to approve the ticket for you so uh, this is all I uh, wanted to share in this uh, in this video and i hope you enjoyed uh, watching this video and you learned something new today thank you very much